how to become more reliant on the inner knowledge and trusting the information that comes from the inner source and distinguishing its origin. So three questions in one. Probably the person is trying to ask the knowledge that comes without the senses. That is not based on senses or not on books, not on people, not on teacher. That is my intuitive knowledge. And again, it is experience. It is a direct experience. The experience that we label as inner experiences. So how to become more reliant on that? There is only one way to um, follow the inner knowledge that comes through the intuition that your minds tell you is like this. And uh, that is to apply the knowledge. You are looking for an answer and the answer comes from within, which is kind of tricky to say because how can it come from within? <laughs> there is nothing within. So let us say it comes from within and you, all you can do is apply it. Just check, check logically and rationally whether it is safe to apply it or not. And then apply it, experiment and check the results of the experiment. And now you see, now you see the results and uh, judge the reliability, judge the accuracy of what has come from the inner source. This is one way. You cannot simply assume that whatever comes from inside is reliable, is okay, is true. No, it is kind of, it will be foolish. So the only way to uh, judge it is through experimentation. So let us take an example. And the outer knowledge says that uh, do whatever it takes to survive, get get whatever you want through any means possible. And your inner self says that, uh, no, I need to be more uh, uh, discriminating. I need to use a specific kind of way that can be ethical or uh, that can be more loving and less, less violent. And uh, I need to choose my actions like this. Now, which one, the one is outer, which the society has taught you to be competitive and violent in the society? extrovert and um, liar, receiver, whatever it takes. Fake it, uh, that that you think I cannot rely on that. And this one is coming from your inner self. So how to judge it? And the only way is to put it into practice. Put whatever your self has said, your inner voice is telling you. Put it into practice step by step and see the results. If the results are as per your desires, as per your wish, which is it brings more happiness and freedom, makes you happy and sets you free, your, destroys your ignorance and so on, gives you a perfect experience. Then you can trust the inner voice. You can now conclude that yes, it was a correct intuition. And the more it happens gradually, it is not going it is not going to happen that from tomorrow you start trusting your inner voice whatever it is from tomorrow you start trusting your intuition it is not going to happen like this put it into practice get the experience get the feedback from the universe the universe will tell you you see what is the correct action correct speech correct thought the universe will give you the feedback the feedback is very simple either it is pain or pleasure either it is suffering or happiness. If whatever your inner source said brings a lot of suffering and it is not a short-term suffering, it is not like a tiny bit of pain, but continues for many, many days and months and years, then now you know that you cannot rely on that voice, that inner voice. You need to be more practical now. You need to take advice from others, teachers and masters. And... Uh, if it brings happiness and freedom, you feel light. You that is the feeling that we get when we are we are freed from something. It is a feeling of lightness. Nothing to do now. I'm free, and that is the feedback that the universe gives whenever we take uh, proper action. Whenever we uh, our decision is right, so it's always in, always in retrospect, isn't it? How can you decide that my voice? My inner voice is reliable now and everything I'll do based on this inner voice, it is going to be perfect. No, no, that is kind of stupid. So um, it is always experimental. Put your inner knowledge to practice. See what fruit it brings. If it most of the time, say 80%, 90% of the time, 
it is bringing happiness and freedom then you can rely then you can rely on your intuition there are methods to sharpen your intuition also which i have discussed somewhere while discussing the abilities of the mind i have gone into a lot of detail there so it is again uh, a practice uh, some kind of practice to sharpen your intuition and it also always starts with small steps baby steps you do not initially you do not trust your intuition at all then start applying it in the small matters like which book to buy which movie to watch uh, which person to talk to you do not apply your intuition in you know which political party should i join which religion should i join or which, where to marry what property to buy no there there the risk is too much <laughs> you see the universe will reply you as usual but it will it will hit you like a brick you don't want that kind of risk there you use your practical knowledge the out, outer knowledge is you consult with your friends and family and people experts and use that knowledge but in the small things use intuition where where in the the repercussions the consequences are not going to be heavy use your intuition there and this is how you develop it little by little go on using it for more important things slowly 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 and as you can guess it is going to take a lot of time in the spiritual method uh, matters nothing is instantaneous it is always long journey so the other part of the question is how to distinguish its origin my experience is you cannot do that it comes from the mind there is no such thing as my mind the mind is an accumulation of uh, memories the memories have the content that always comes from experience the experience can be inner the experience can be outer but the contents of the mind decide everything what we are what we do uh, what we think they, this is all decided by the memory memory is not something uh, which stores the phone number or name or your skill or the book that you read or the story of a movie or a song no that is not the memory that is a tiny part of the memory memory is essentially the whole of your mind that is, that is what it is you see i am talking i am talking from the memory there is a memory of the language then the memory of the facts memory of um, uh, my experiences and every every kind of process that is going on in my mind is a memory of some kind so uh, when i say it comes from the memory it is the storehouse of experiences it is not mine it is not local it is not in your head so these things uh, you will need to go a little bit deeper in uh, what the mind is it is a metaphysical entity it is a non local information storage thing that is also a model what we see is only experiences we do not see the model we do not see the embodiment of the mind it is invisible how can you distinguish from where the intuition comes it is always coming from the memory not my memory not your memory not from other it is one whole so uh, that's why i said in the beginning the distinct the distinction of inner and outer is kind of for convenience there is no such distinction it is always from this universe it you know comes here and kinds of uh, is digested or processed a little bit and then is thrown out that is all the person is <laughs> it is like a tiny machine where things come in and then they are thrown out it is kind of ignorance to call it as me that i did it or my mind it's not my mind we do not have a mind we do not have an i the person or the ego is a, a fiction it does not exist so you can use any kind of theory or any kind of model to um, uh, model the mind and uh, use it but uh, most refined kind of models of the mind say that it is universal in nature there is nothing individual there so if you want to uh, isolate the source or let me see this intuition this knowledge is coming from me or somebody else well, impossible impossible there is no me there is no somebody else see it like this there are just experiences in the and the mind or the ego the identity creator 
will categorize it and kind of arbitrarily, randomly, based on its ignorance. Oh, it appeared out of nowhere. I just thought it someday and it is now my knowledge, my intuition. No, no, that is kind of wrong to say. Who knows from where it came? And then you heard it from a guru or a person or read it in the book and you said, no, no, outside knowledge. It is not my intuition. Now, let's see, there is no reason to say like this because uh, it is only the channel that is different. You know uh, that, that there is something which delivered you this knowledge. That's all. That is the only difference. In the first case, you did not know from where it came. So you branded it as mine. Second case, you, you found some something that looks like from there it is coming. And uh, you say, oh, it is outside me. But no, it is. And apart from this kind of arbitrary distinction, there is no distinction between what appears as an experience, what appears as a knowledge, no distinction. And if somebody told you something, then uh, just think from where he got that knowledge. You see, the knowledge, there must be an ultimate source. And if everybody get it from somebody else, then there must there is no source then. <laughs> Ultimately, the source is inside only, isn't it? When we express it in this world, it, it appears like it is coming from outside. Who is expressing it? Not somebody's mind. There is no somebody. The universal mind is expressing it using one of its forms. That's all. That's all. So all the experience, all the all the knowledge is universal in nature. It's not my knowledge. It's not your knowledge. It's not coming from this source, that source. No. That is why there, there is a um, concept to describe this. It is called the guru field about which I spoke for at least one hour. You know, I went into a lot of um, uh, details about what this guru field is, the guru shetram. It is, you can say, an abstract concept which points to a storehouse of knowledge in the universal mind. Although you cannot see it, although you, you cannot point to it, look, there is the guru field, go there. No, it is everywhere, isn't it? But for, for expressing, for the purpose of talking about it, expressing it in language, we can do this kind of abstraction of the guru field and we can say that it is the part of the universal memory where all the knowledge resides and you can connect to it. And I've you know, given a lot of methods to connect to it. And the most natural method is just seek, ask, search. You are always connected.